Welcome to Study Life. In this session of semiconductor and electronic devices, we are going to focus on a P-type semiconductor. How do you get a P-type semiconductor? You have to take an intrinsic semiconductor, add an impurity from the third group of the periodic table, and then the product you get is a P-type semiconductor. Let's see how does this look like. Let me consider few atoms of silicon. Let's not talk about few, let's only talk about four atoms of silicon. Every atom of silicon will have four electrons in its outermost shell as you can see in the pictorial description I am giving out to you. You can see I have drawn four atoms of silicon with four electrons each on the outermost shell. Now let me draw one atom of aluminium. Aluminium is nothing but an element that has got three electrons in the outermost shell. Very simple, right? What will happen now? As we know, silicon basically makes covalent bonds with other atoms. So here it can make a covalent bond with some silicon over here. Here it is happy, here it is happy, here it is happy. Over here it makes different bonds with silicon atoms. Again here it makes different bonds with silicon atoms. Here it makes different bonds with silicon atoms. But to this electron, there is no electron that is available. Like aluminium doesn't, doesn't have any electron over here. Aluminium does not have any electron over here. So this is a stranded electron. What does aluminium do? Aluminium creates a positive vacant space. A positive vacant space and it terms it as hole. What is it called as? Hole. Okay. What happens with a hole? This electron jumps and takes a space into this hole, stays here for a while. The very moment you start pushing electricity into this conductor, the first electron from the stream of electrons will come and dodge this electron over here. This electron that is over here will be hit by this external electron. This electron moves out. This, this electron takes the space. Now, the second electron from this stream will hit this electron, will move away. And similarly, many electrons will be taking the space over here, making themselves comfortable here, and then will be conducting electricity. This is the exact scenario that happens in the p-type semiconductor. Here, we understand that the number density of holes is far, far, far greater than the number density of electrons. Obviously, the electricity or the electric current generated by the holes is much, much, much more than the electricity generated by the electrons. If somebody asks you to calculate the conductivity, if somebody ever asks you to calculate the conductivity of this scenario, conductivity is given as NH into mu H times E. What is NH, the number density of holes? What is mu H? Mu H is nothing but the mobility of holes. What it is, the mobility of holes. E is nothing but our electronic charge. This, the, uh, everything that is written over here is really, really, really important. You'll have to memorize every single point of this because they can be asking you questions from anywhere. Also, one more point you need to understand that over here, my majority charge carriers, what did I say, Bacho? Repeat with me. My majority charge carriers are holes. My majority charge carriers are holes. What are my electrons? Yes, my in electrons are mira, minority charge carriers. Electrons are, bitcha, kon kya hai electrons? Electrons are minority charge carrier. So I suppose everybody has understood a lot of deal into this topic. We now know what a p-type semiconductor is, what an n-type semiconductor is, what an extrinsic semiconductor is. In the next video, we are going to learn about the valence band and the conduction band, that is the energy bands for a p-type semiconductor and an n-type semiconductor. Until then, stay tuned with Study Life and keep learning with me. Thank you. Thank you.